So fun story. Get my laugh out early. <laughs> so I was just talking earlier here at Lay Home about how I want. To, I'm not hungry, but I, I want to chaw on something. Just want to. I just chew on some. No one mentioned that this existed. <laughs> I literally have a box of snack food. No one told me it was here. That's beside the point. The other funny story. It's because I'm terrible non-professional person. This is also home of the cotton top tamarind animal. I just slapped a label over over this nice little creature, but that's what he looks like in cartoon form. Still haven't uh, edited the other Yums video. So that's a thing. Anywho, it'll happen. Where are we? Oh! Colombia! Good, I'm getting- I'm, uh, I didn't want to be in Brazil. No offense, Brazil, but we've been- we've been there. Time to go somewhere else. We've not been to Colombia that I remember at all. I should start making, like, a list of where I've been, so that way I'm not, like, confused every time going, Have I been here? I don't know! So, anywho, oh, grabbing, grabbing all the things. Welcome to Colombia! Oh, see, there he is. There's a better picture of him. He's hugging the Yum's box. He's happy to be here and having a good time. Look at all the places and things! That's our little booklet, and then on the back, if you're new here, and you have somehow stumbled across this video, uh, this is where I eat things out of this box that comes from Universal Yums. It's $14 a month? Yeah, $14 a month. And uh, there's a little card inside it that has this, and then also has an area where you can fill out fun little things, uh, spell out what your favorite yums are, or the strangest, or the worst, weirdest, second best, best, all that jazz. It also comes with a little booklet of all kinds of informational fun things that I go over rather than just eating the entire box. And I just kind of eat it piecemeal whenever I feel like a snack, which that would be like today right now. So anywho, un poco de todo, a little bit of everything. This will be great because, uh, dear Colombia, I don't know if you speak Spanish or Portuguese or a little bit of both, um, but I'm going to be way better at pronouncing a lot of that than I am at, say, like, you know, Greek, because I... <laughs> Don't know any of that, and I took uh, four years of Spanish in high school, which is a while ago now, but I still remember a lot of it because you have four years of that getting pounded in your brain. It's kind of hard to forget a lot of it. Anywho, welcome to Colombia. This country uh, it's a little bit of everything. There's a bit of the old ancient civilizations existed in Colombia over 14,000 years ago, and a bit of new. The country has gone through a total transformation since achieving independence from Spain. There are 11 different climates in the country, including cold deserts, mountainous ranges, rainforests, and tropical beaches, and all are home to some of the world's most diverse wildlife. There's even a wide-ranging art scene. Both world-renowned painter Fernando Botero and pop superstar Shakira hail from Colombia. I did not know that. And, as you'll soon see, Colombia's rich diversity extends to its truly incredible yums. From passion fruit lollipops to lime bacon chips, which that sounds amazing and we might have to eat, this country has a little of everything to love. Get ready to be won over by something. So, mm, a lot of things in bags. Whoa, ooh, plantain chips. I won't eat those today because I was literally just eating banana chips at work, which I realize bananas as we eat them here, is not the same as plantain. Same general concept, but uh, not the same thing at all. So, these are... let's do this. The, they're right on the top. Lime bacon chips, let's do that. These are tocineto limon, bacon and lime chips. Bacon. Some might argue that it's America's favorite food, but that honor has already been taken by Colombia. Colombia's national food, bandeja paisa, features a generous portion of fried pork belly called chicharron alongside rice, beans, ground beef, chorizo, plantains, cornbread, avocado, fried egg, and lots of lime. That sounds like an amazing party! I want to be involved in it. Uh, this impressive dish was first created in the 1950s for hardworking farmers who required heaping helpings of food to fuel their long work days. So these bacon and lime chips you are getting a taste of Colombia's most beloved and historic meal. But you're also getting a taste of Universal Yum's legend. Interesting. You see, each time we visited Colombia, we've included these chips in the box. Ooh, impressive. With their fresh citrus tang and overt saltiness, they're always voted the top yum from Colombia. Well, I guess we're gonna... Oh no, does that mean it's all downhill from here? Uh -oh. Maybe we should open up an online shop so we can stock them all the time. It could be the next American classic. Well, y'all were talking about doing that years ago. 
about opening up an online thing where we could order the, like the best of the best, which would be flipping amazing because there's some stuff that I would love to have again. I remember there's a couple things from Thai, most of the stuff from the various Asian so, so Thailand, I think there's a couple from Taiwan. Oh, I like the stripes that they gave these, so that's kind of fun. Uh, and then there was the uh, roasted corn Cheetos from... I don't remember. But roasted corn Cheetos, and those were amazing. So they gave us some stripes, so of course we look like bacon. They don't really smell uh, in any fashion. There's, there's, it doesn't smell like bacon, which is I fully expected bacon and then maybe some citrus. But what are these made of? Are they just pork? Pork rinds? Are they just uh, porky porky? So no, it's it's one. It's all it's all super fake. Wheat flour, vegetable oil, cornstarch, iodized salt, sodium bicarbonate, artificial flavors, and then the colors with numbers like you know yellow six. So there's no actual. Bacon or lime. It's all artificial flavors. So I guess Well, that's that, that didn't really matter because they can artificially. You know what? Let's just they can artificially make sense But you know what? Let's just eat the thing. That's what we're here for. We're here to eat, not to smell. Ha. Really good wheat flour chips you got here. I feel like you could do this to pork rinds, and it'd be great. The lime kind of overpowers the bacony flavor, um, but yeah, it is like a bacon base, and then uh, the the texture itself is kind of pork rindy, which is kind of fun. But um, the lime is stronger; the tang is strong. But still, really good. But yeah, do it some pork rinds. Some lime on there. Yeah. Sign me up. Ow. Well, I got my I got my munchies the way I wanted. So I'm gonna eat these. And these are apparently the best, so I guess it is all down to lot. Probably not. There's some interesting looking things in here. But it's a good way to start, so welcome to Columbia and let us go on. Hi there, I'm back. I'm going to eat more food now. <laughs> There's this little, uh, Bianchi bar that looks like it might have, I don't know, peanuts and caramel and some chocolate and whatnot, so we gonna eat that. Because why not? Bianchi bar with caramelo and mani. A chocolate coated caramel and peanut bar wafer. It's the wafers. They're back! Anywho, the world's finest chocolate comes from Belgium, Italy, and Colombia? Yep, you read that right. The cacao plant is a native to Colombia, meaning locals have been enjoying chocolate for centuries. Their favorite cocoa sweet? Hot chocolate, which, trivia spoiler, my lamp is freaking out, uh, is traditionally served with savory cheese for dunking. Aww. Recently, the cocoa craze country has taken its chocolate creations to the international market, where they've been met with sweet success. Colombia is now the 11th largest exporter of chocolate, and its products are extraordinary. A whopping 95% of the country's chocolate has been deemed Fine, aka of superior quality and flavor by the International Cacao Organization. I should probably go work for them. My love of chocolate. Demand for Colombia's high quality chocolate has increased so significantly that many farmers have begun growing cacao instead of traditionally lucrative crops like coffee. Oh, that means you're about to have a lot more Colombian chocolate. Mm. After you try this chocolate bar filled with salty peanuts and gooey caramel, you'll see that it's a very fine thing. Oh great! Why is it so tiny though? More chocolate. This is like fun size for me. Also, can't open it already. How? Why have you done this to me? No! This shouldn't be this hard. It's got like little ridges. Like honestly, why is this even difficult? I don't... What universe am I living in? No, I have a knife. Let's do this instead. And there we go. Wow. Open. Luckily, I'm guessing, since it doesn't look too melty because it's been pretty hot, that this was fetched from the uh, the mailbox before it got too melty. So it looks like it's still in pretty good shape. So instead of having melted all to the wrapper and things. Oh. 
Wait, where did the wafer part come in? Is it just in here? Or something? Some other caramel makes it kind of chewy. The chocolate's pretty mellow, really. Let me see, let's just do it. Scrape some off. I guess it's more on the dark side. I mean, it looks like milk chocolate-ish, but it doesn't taste the same. It tastes like lesser, like, what is the word I want? More on the side, I think, like, more like cocoa powder, rather than, like, just like a straight bar of dark chocolate, where it's kind of got that sort of, I don't, it kind of like a tang to it, I guess you could say. Where it's like they kind of went to start to go to milk chocolate with this, but didn't add like 50 cups of sugar, but they did something to mellow out the chocolate. Hmm, interesting. So is the wafer just like in here? Like I don't understand. Because they got mostly peanuts and caramel, so. I don't really know what the wafer has to do with anything. Oh, that's pretty good. It's a simple, basic treat. Should satisfy your sweet tooth. Oh. Okay, huh? Well, Bianchi bar. One more food! Ah. What's in the yum bag? Let's find out. Ah. Ooh. We've got two things. Lollipops. I don't know. Super cocoa. Are you chocolate? What are you? Con coco. So something with cocoa. It's 100% natural. Uh, something sabor con mucho coco. Okay. Let's eat that one, whatever it is. Super coco, uh, tutor tito. Chewy coconut candy. <laughs> oh, I like coconut. Every superhero has an origin story for Super, the company behind this famous yam. That story started in 1948 in the city of, uh, Menizales. Back then, the company was called Superman, and... You want to come up? Oh, let's read together. Yes, I smell like delicious things, don't I? Let us read. Hello. You're halting the video as usual with your nonsense and you're wanting to smell my breath. All right, we get it, we get it. Anywho, uh, where was I? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Consisted of just eight people making chewing gum and coconut candies. A lot has changed in 71 years. The company gained 1,600 employees, trimmed its name to Super, added gummies, mints, and chocolates to their product line, but no great superhero can forget their roots. Even after all of their success, Super is still best known for their original coconut candy. The ones you're holding in your hand. The one my dog is sniffing right now. Calm down. Also, stay away from the razor blade. <laughs> Knives! Uh, hold on. This roasted coconut sweet is truly one of kind, with a hard texture that slowly becomes soft in your mouth, allowing you to savor the candy's rich flavor the entire time. After you've tried it, you'll understand why Super produces a whopping 24 million of the sweets every month, using over 300,000 coconuts. Jeezo, how do you even have enough trees for them? It always baffles me how we're able to keep up with the amount of crap we eat. But somehow we do. Uh, just to keep up with local band. Sounds like this candy is just super. It's also a lot of Colombian's crypt tonight. It is green. All right, time to go. Hello. Would you like to be a part of this? You're being a good boy today. I'm proud of you. Even though you have issues with the feet. He's been licking his feet, so he's had to wear a little booty on his foot. So he stopped licking it. But someone wants to keep licking it once the booty's off. So I have to keep my eye on You right there, stud? Got your old man cough? He's an old boy. Not that old. How old are you? 12? Oh god, don't jump for me. It's insane still. Alright. Super cork up. There we go. Oh, that is not the color I expect. Well, it is toasted. So that's why it's this lovely shade of brown. There's too much behind it to, for it to focus so hard. Do it. Tortured coconut. I enjoy coconut. It's interesting. I see why a lot of people do just. If I'm cooking, I have to toast coconut. You know, you get all the shreds and you put it in your pan. 
pop it in the oven, toast up, and it smells so good. I absolutely eat a lot of that shredded coconut before and after. And end up on the pan. Because it's delicious. This is basically just a stick of toasted coconut. So, yes. Please, more. Always. I'll cover it in chocolate. I'll do it. I'll be on. Okay. Well, that's really all there is to it. If you like coconut, it's great. If you don't, you won't like it. If you want to experience this, go buy a bag of co co coconut, put it on a pan, spread it out, pop it in your oven, wait for it to start to brown up a little bit, take it out, eat it. Chocolates. Looks like there's a gummy bear inside of it. Chocolate Blanco. Ah, white chocolate. Anyway. Eh, it is what it is. I'm not a fan of white chocolate. We all know this. If you're new, white chocolate is not real chocolate. It's chocolate byproduct. That whole process. So it's just fake. Anywho, it's basically just pure sugar and cocoa butter. Uh, these are white chocolate coated gummies. Interesting. Uh, if you live in Colombia, you'll often see this chocolate coated gummy. Don't call it that. At parties. It's not real chocolate. And not just any party, but one specific celebration. Can you guess what it is? Something to do with the gummy bears? I don't know. Uh, hint. Look at the candy's colors. Easter? They're all... I mean, it's hard to... I mean, because what might mean one thing for me might mean something completely different in another country, so... Uh, extra hint. It's not Easter. Okay, well, see... How might... What? How are you gonna... Okay. Anywho. Uh, it's a quinceanera. Oh, well... I, what? Ain't no one in the USA gonna know that unless they celebrate uh, kids and yours, because that's their culture. And then they would know. But I'm a random white American girl that has no concept of these things, so I don't know. Uh, for Colombians, a girl's 15th birthday is a big deal. For everyone else, it's 16. Uh, not everyone else, just. Why is that? Why is that a thing? Anyway, um, di we're diverting here a lot, it's my brain. What? Anywho, it marks her transition into adulthood, which is celebrated with the Fiesta de Quince Años, commonly known as a quinceanera. So, what does this party entail? First, there is a father-daughter waltz, then a dance party, and later in the night there is a La Oro Loca, the crazy hour, when partygoers blow whistles and put on masks to keep the celebration going strong. Like at a wedding, one of the highlights of the night is seeing the birthday girl make an entrance in an elaborate pastel color dress. Hopefully there's girls out there who don't like pastels fighting to change that because I'm not really into pastels myself. Now you can see the colorful connection. The bright colors of these candies make them a perfect party snack for quinceaneras. Grab a few pieces and get your own party going. Oh, fun fact. My 16th birthday. Because here in America is the sweet 16 thing. What's it called? Mine sucked. Yeah, it was real crappy. Not good at all. I'm not going to go into details, but it was not good. These are a little warm. They got a little moist. For those of you that don't like that word, I apologize. Dogs are over there hacking. Yo, what's going on? You okay? Uh, smells like pure sugar. Mmm. Hop. There's a gummy in there. I think I like this combo. Because the gummies are obviously flavored. So it's like, here's white chocolate, a lot of sugar, and then a random flavored gummy. I want to say this is orange, maybe? Hmm. That's, uh... This looks like a bear, but this just looks like a blob. Is it supposed to be a bear? Let me see if I can do this. Oh, no. Cause this isn't weird at all. They lied to us. It's just a blob of 
jelly bean or jelly jelly whatever and this one's orange too are they supposed to be a different flavor see now it by itself that's good it's like a good orange jelly bean innard if you will but uh not a fan of that combo with the white chocolate and the jelly bean together. It wants up. I'm not going to give you any because they're gross. And you can't have any because it's pure sugar and not good for you. Yeah, I know. Every time you come up here, every time you try to lick my face, being a gross puppy. I don't like them, little boy. You'd like them because they have flavor, but you like lettuce too, so you're all about whatever you can get your mouth on. Yeah. Let's eat another true doo doo doo. Oh, they're kind of slippery because, uh. They're all orange? Let's find out while we pet the tiny thing here. Oh, there. I don't know. <sighs> what flavor this is because the sweetness of the white chocolate just drowns it out. I legitimately don't know. Maybe another one? I'm kind of tempted to just bite them open, pull out the the gummy bit, just eat that. Forget the white chocolate. Just so I'm not into these. If you like white chocolate, you might. It's it's a weird combo just in general, but it's not really for me. So I guess I'll transition over to the next segment, whichever I'm thing I'm eating next. <laughs> Let's eat some mayonnaise chips. Rosadas, mayonnaise, or mayonnaise. Could be good, could be weird. I feel like I've had mayonnaise chips before. So I guess we're gonna find out. Colombians are known for excellence in many areas, but today we'll touch only one, condiments. Generations of locals have created an accompaniment for every dish imaginable. Zesty cilantro salsa for empanadas, creamy avocado sauce for fried green plantains, and many, many more. You can try your hand at your own condiment creations with the recipes on page 18. <laughs> Do I have a page 18? No, I have a page 12. So I guess that's in the bigger boxes. Anyway, I feel like Y'all should look into that. You can't tell me to try things and then I don't. Look, that's the back. That's page 12 right there. Anyway, as you'll see in the recipes, there's one ingredient that Colombians frequently use as a jumping off point for new saucy concoctions. Mayonnaise. There have been many variations over time, mixing mayo with ketchup to make their iconic salsa rosada, pink sauce, or adding in handfuls of chopped garlic to make salsa uh, de ajo, garlic sauce, now they've paired it with directly crispy, paired it directly with crispy potato chips for one of the most innovative condiment creations we've ever seen. Go ahead, trust the condiment connoisseurs of Colombia, but only if you like mayo. I like mayo. I do feel like I've eaten mayonnaise chips before, or something very close, where it's like chips with mayonnaise and then yada yada. They pretty much just smell like potato chips, really. Although, I don't know, does mayonnaise really have a smell? Yeah, kinda, I guess. Mm. Anyway. I mean, what is it? If you're making, um. How do you make a. Um, oh no, it's sour cream and onion. Never mind. Hmm. It's not heavy on the mayo, it's a little kind of light. I mean, I feel like if you were just like, you know, someone just had these chips and like, here, have some, and you're like, okay, you'd eat them and you would be like, what flavor is this? Like, I don't think you'd figure it out. Like, eating it, knowing what it is, I'm not really going, yeah, that's mayo. I'm just like, there's a flavor thing there, but I don't, I can't positively identify it as mayo. Then again, their mayo might taste completely different from my mayo. So, it's good. It's 
flavored potato chip. I don't know if I've ever really had a potato chip in a flavor I don't really like. Unless it's just like really weird. But. No. I'm down with flavored potato chips. Mayonnaise. Works for me. Oh my gosh, look at these people. They're having a great time. Look at how happy they are. They're just having a good old time. Yeah, mayonnaise potato chips. I don't know if I'm having that good of a time, but I'm enjoying myself. Good, good chips. There's a monkey. And an astronaut suit. We're not going to ask the question of why. He's just there, I guess. Surrounded by small cookie things. Galletas, which is cookies, but it also says cookies on here, so even if you didn't know that, it would it tells you. Uh, I don't know if that's a D. I think it's a D. Madritas? Is that a D? By La Nina. Let's find out what these are. Plantain cookies. Oh, I was not expecting that at all. Uh, it is a D. Galletas uh, Maduras. Alright, you know the phrase, Jack of all trades? Plantains win that award in the fruit world. As one of the most, most multifaceted fruits on Earth, plantains particularly <laughs> prove their versatility through Colombian cuisine. The fruits are grilled, roasted, boiled, fried, sauteed, smashed, and stuffed into countless unique dishes from sweet treats like Bunellos? Bunellos? Bunellos de... Uh, Platanos Maduros Sweet Stuffed Plantain Balls. Ah, so I'm guessing Maduros stands for plantains because that's the only similar word between that and this. To savor delights like Crema de Platano Verde, Creamy Plantain Soup. And that's not all. Locals use every bit of the plant, even wrapping tamales in the plantain's thick, rigid leaves. Given the flexibility of this fruit, it shouldn't be a surprise to hear that Colombians often eat it for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and dessert. While the garlic plantain chips you tried earlier are a great lunch item, I wouldn't know anything about that because I haven't even tried those yet. <laughs> Quit assuming I'm going in order of your book. I mean, whatever I want. Whatever I want. Where am I? This variation on plantains is for those with a sweet tooth. If you try both of them back to back, you'll see just how different the fruit can taste depending upon its use. Jack of all trades indeed. Probably won't be back to back because I tend to eat things, again, whenever I want. Sometimes I'm just not in the mood for extra snackums. Never mind that I've eaten probably too much sugar today. It smells like chips and not cookies. In that they don't smell sweet in any way, shape, or form. At all. They're tiny though. Look at how tiny they are. Tiny. Oh. I killed it. You know what they remind me of? of all things, grape nuts. Now for those of you that don't know, grape nuts is actually a cereal. I don't remember what it's made of, but it's very crunchy and it will tie your jaw out. And I also dump about a cup of sugar in it every time I eat it. That's if I eat it. I haven't eaten it for years, but I remember really liking it. It's not exact, it's, it's different in its own way, but honestly, overall, that's what the flavor reminds me of. How weird. Definitely not as crunchy. More of a, more of like a shortbread kind of texture, consistency, something or other. Maybe a little bit more crunchy than shortbread, really. But these are good. Mm. Just a nice, chill kind of snack. Just chill, like this monkey. I don't know why he's in space. I guess because these are circles. Except they're not even circles. I expected them to be like full circles, like planets. Lies. They are 2D. Uh, technically, it's still 3D, but they're not circle 3D. Shut up. Don't ruin my mouth. Hey, let's have a. I don't know if the palm trees are supposed to make a thing or not. So, if not, I'm guessing Ma Coco. And if so, then Max Coco. We're still in Colombia with. It is an X, so it's Max Coco. Wafers with coconut cream filling. Yes, please. Thank you. When you think coconuts, you probably think of the tropics. Florida, the Caribbean, South America. So, it might surprise you that coconuts aren't native to any of those places. Aww, were they brought over by European swallows of any kind? <laughs> some of you are gonna get that joke, some of you are gonna think I'm a weird, weird person. Scientists have actually traced their origins all the way to the other side of the world. Suddenly, European swallows don't seem so strange. 
Uh, they believe the Spanish brought an Asian coconut strain to the Pacific coast of South America, and the Portuguese brought an Indian coconut strain to the Caribbean. So which one grows in Colombia? Both! Since Colombia borders the Pacific Ocean and the Caribbean Sea, the country is covered in both kinds of coconut trees. Need to see it to believe it? We'll do you one better. You can taste it! The sweet coconut cream inside this wafer is made from a blend of Colombia's coconut species, then slathered in four- slathered on, my bad. Uh, four crispy, lightly chocolatey layers of wafer. With its far-reaching roots and incredible flavor, this is one truly universal yum. Well, that's good to know that... Well, I don't actually know this for sure, but that, you know, they brought coconuts over and it didn't totally ruin the ecosystem! Like some things. Invasive species and whatnot. Oh, there's two of them. Okay, hold on. Let's, uh, gently... Slide this boy out so it's not a big square like I thought it might be. It's actually two put into. Ooh, I can smell it. I can smell the coconut. Two put into one. Oh, that smells just fine. If you like coconut. Oh, yeah. Ha. Seems like there's more wafer than coconut cream. I feel like it should be reversed. More coconuts, always. 24-7, please. Thank you. They are very lightly chocolatey. But not, you know, not. Just enough that you can notice. Hmm. I might have to try and do the... Oh. My crumbs all over my desk as usual. Alright. Mm-hmm. So let's do the <clears throat> split apart thing. Yeah, there's not a lot in here. Honestly, it smells way stronger than it actually tastes, which is interesting. It's like you bust it out and it's like, kabam! Coconut deliciousness. And then you taste it and you're like, I mean, it's in there, but. Uh. So it's good, but I feel like it's not as good as it could be, or maybe it's as good as I want it to be. I like coconut. Don't tell me it's slathered on there. It's not slathered on there. Don't exaggerate. They put a little bit on there. Slathered would be like, mm, more. Get your definitions correct, Universal Jones. Come on. Don't be just throwing out adjectives all willy nilly and verbiage and things. It's not accurate. It's still good though. If you like the wafery stuff. My friend seems to be obsessed with wafer stuff. I mean, I know here in the States we have some wafery things, but... I don't know. Maybe it's because of the number of things I get in the boxes that have like, oh, it's a wafer with this flavor, or it's a wafer with this flavor, or it's a wafer with this flavor. It just seems like everyone else besides us is obsessed with wafers. I don't know. Maybe I'm just getting a disproportionate number of wafer things. Or someone at University of Elms just really likes the wafer stuff. If so, calm down. Not everyone loves the wafer stuff. It's okay. It's not that magical. Anywho, more coconut and chocolate, please. Let's have a sucker. Because why not? Uh, bon bon bum. Passion fruit. I work. Donde? Sta. The passion fruit bon bon bum. It's a lolly. Ooh, it's got a bubblegum center. Ah, yeah. This isn't a lollipop. It's a bon bon bum. Interesting name, huh? In Colombia, the word bum is pronounced like boom. Oh, so bon bon boom. Uh, referring to the explosion of flavor inside the lollipop. You just said it wasn't a lollipop, and yet here you are referring to it as a lollipop. Make up your mind. Uh, obviously the word boom means something a bit different in the U.S., which Colombia, the manufacturer... Oh, Colombina, my bad. Uh, quickly discovered when they began selling the candy here. But, I mean, like, I mean, yeah, I thought about it, and then I got over it. Like, the rest of y'all, calm down. Well, anyway, uh, after many blank stares, they changed the American labels to Bon Bon Boom, with the actual spelling B-O-O-M, to avoid any bum-related bewilderment, kind of like with the UK, and our usage of fanny packs. T 
<laughs> Go look that up if you don't know what I'm talking about. Normally, we wouldn't dedicate so much time to pronunciation, but it's important for this candy. Most Colombians refer to any and all lollipops by the name of Bon Bon. Kind of like how we do Dum Dums, really. Uh, since their debut in 1970, they've become a true national sensation. It's even said that Colombian pop star Shakira keeps them in her purse at all times. Based on the mouth-watering tang of the passion fruit variety, we think it's safe to say her taste buds don't lie. No. Dap it. It's a nice good size. Same as, oh, oh it's got the passion fruity seeds and everything in there. Look at that. So we're going to sample it and then um, we're going to cut back to the, the crunching of it so I get the bubble gum. Because it ain't going to take no three licks like that owl stole that kid's lollipop. What a jerk. That guy sucks. I guess it smells like passion fruit. I've don't, I don't think I've eaten passion fruit. Uh, not that I remember anyway. Ow. Mm -hmm. Probably in juice. I feel like juice I've had a pet like oh, with, with different fruits in it, including passion fruit. Recently, actually. Mm. Anyway, I'll Tastes like passion fruit. And it's a sucker. So it's pretty straightforward. Cut to the bubble gum. So I feel like it hasn't gone out too too much, but I kinda wanna crunch it. I don't even think I've gotten it any of the I assume they're seeds, but who knows? Mm -hmm. Gotta get some of them chunks off first. But I can see the bubble gum. So is it gum gummy? I assume gum is gonna be gum. Gum flavored. Because it's all pink. And most gum inside these are just gum. Gum! Yes, it is just gum flavored. So that's good. It's like your everyday average sucker, only with passion fruit flavor instead of, you know, strawberry or whatever. And now I have gum. I am sad that they use, like, a plastic stick instead of the paper stick, because... <sighs> less plastic in the world, guys, come on. You know? Get the paper. It'll degrade better instead of this thing that's gonna get stuck somewhere. No. <laughs> Gum. Flavor's gone. Plantain chips. I like, uh, I had, um, some banana chips. Now, plantains are not the same as bananas, I know that. They are less sweet, I think, and these are actually garlic flavored. So, let us read about the Turbana garlic plantain chips. Bananas and garlic? Ew. Unfortunately, these chips aren't bananas, but rather Colombian plantains. Ever wonder what the difference are between them? Kind of, yeah. Ish. Uh, don't worry, we have a very thorough analysis. Buckle up, kids. It's actually not that long involved. First, bananas grow six to eight inches long and have a thin peel, while plantains grow twice that size and have a peel so thick you need a knife to remove it. Didn't know that. Second, bananas can be eaten raw, while plantains must be cooked. They're far too bitter to be eaten uncooked. That's also why they're sometimes called cooking bananas. Lastly, bananas are mainly used in sweet dishes, but the plantain's mild flavor allows it to be used in both sweet and savory dishes, such as the snack. The heavy dose of garlic pairs well with plantains, and this is definitely a flavor combination you'd never ever want to try with bananas. That's what I figured. Less sweet, more of a functional fruit, I guess you'd say, for lack of a better phrase. Oh, they're very thin. It smells garlicky. It smells really good, actually. Oh, it's two are stuck together. Friends forever till the end. It's clear they've been toasted in some fashion. You can taste the garlic very faintly, it's not very strong. Um I've never had plantains in like literally anything. I 
guess one could say there's like a very just like echo very faint of banana but it's mostly its own thing which it's hard to describe I don't really know how to because even though I think plantains are still technically fruit because in the same family as banana it's kind of got its own like I don't like vegetable flavor I guess one could say in a way it almost doesn't have a flavor like you can taste the garlic on top of it and after that it's just kind of like a like a weird chip I don't know it's not bad bad by any stretch of the imagination it's just really hard to describe But just like I enjoy my dried nan chips, this would also be. I feel like would this be like a healthy alternative to mm, potato chips, or are they cooked the same way? I don't know. I'll be honest, I don't really care. Ingredients: green plantain, veggie oil, salt, garlic, yada yada. Works for me. I'm cool with these. I'm pretty tasty. So yeah, get yourself some plantain chips. Or some other dish featuring plantains. Does it smell good? It smell like chips? Where do I go? Yes, I know. Everything smells delicious. Now that we're done eating plantain chips, and we have the tiny dog to try and lick my face as per usual. <laughs> Let us read the final the final clue to next month's box now that we've eaten all the goodies in our box. It was so tasty. Was it good? I don't know why I'm asking you. You didn't get anything. I'm sorry. You had a snack earlier today. You act like you never eat. You eat plenty. You eat lettuce because you're weird. Such a hits. Alright, tiny boy. Clue to next month's box. On the equator, there's a green jewel oh, with dragons and temples that look really cool. We found a whole bunch of really good finds like noodles and melons and tamarind rinds. Ooh. On the equator, though, what's, uh, dragons and temples? Somewhere in China? <clears throat> hmm. Green jewel could either be emerald or could be jade. I'm kind of leaning towards, well, no, I guess jade's not really a jewel. Emeralds are more jewels. Then again, who knows with universal yums. Well, sounds like somewhere east-ish, possibly again, with that description. Uh, which I'm cool with because, yeah, it is an emerald because look, there's literal emeralds on the little description thing. Okay. Well, who has emeralds? I'm about to look it up because now I'm curious. But it sounds like it's gonna be great. Maybe it'll be something like the Philippines again, which would be just <gasps> ducky. Ah! I'm sorry, you're not, you just, where do you want to go? I don't know what you want in life. I don't know what's going on with this video. Anyway, thanks for uh, hanging out with me and eating snacks and having a good time. Subscribe if you want, or don't, or just come back whenever. I don't really mind. I'm just doing this all for funsies. So eat something different that you've never had before, and uh, yeah, toodles!